I've got beef. Not ideal. No. Oh well, I'll have to eat it. What else you got there? Um, I've got a fruit roll. And I've got a banana. I too have the beef. You got rice. I've got rice. I've got beef. Do you want to fix it all again? I don't know. I call it mine, not be gluten free. Oh. Um, and I got a. Oh. So you got a yogurt and a croissant. The beef rendang is actually really good. How's yours? I have to treat Hey, where are we? We're in Brisbane. <laughs> Welcome to Brisneyland. We're only here for a couple of hours this time round. 17 degrees. I feel a little bit cool. Yeah, 30 degrees. <laughs> should have cold. Yeah, should have kept my blanket on. Uh, yeah, we're only here for a few hours this time. But in a few weeks, we'll be back here for a lot longer. Yeah. Well, not a lot longer, a well, bit longer. A couple of days. Hello, Rachel from the future of this video, but the current timeline yeah hi our flight from singapore to brisbane was quite comfortable uh did manage to get a bit of sleep uh it was quite broken up as it always is on an airplane but the meal the beef rendang that i had that is the best meal i've had on a plane for a long time and certainly the best meal i can remember having in economy class um not that i've been able to do much flying outside of economy class but hey and arriving in Brisbane the first thing that hit me was just my brain did not want to accept that it was 6 30 in the morning it was convinced that it was like 4 30 in the morning and I should still be asleep so two weeks in Singapore was obviously long enough to get used to the time difference I actually lived in Brisbane for several years up until the end of 2009, flown in and out of Brisbane Airport many times. And at the time that I left Brisbane, uh, the airport was undergoing renovation. So I had reasonably high expectations of the international terminal at Brisbane. First of all, there were no signs to help out with where you should go and what you should do. Big problem. Like seriously, there were two planes that arrived at a similar time. So there was an awful lot of people and two aeroplane crews. The crew members didn't know where to go either. Along the corridor that you come through after passing through the gate area and the duty-free shopping area, there were some machines there to scan your passport and you got a ticket um, that you could then take to the next section it wasn't really clear if you had to use those machines or if there were other options. There were other options, by the way. So if you're coming through Brisbane, uh, you don't have to use those machines. So if the queue's really long, you can just go on and you join another queue later and you still get a ticket and yeah. The problem with having a ticket was that the machine that read the ticket and then took a picture of your face to make sure you matched your passport was not working. There was a very unhelpful security person on the other side of the machines telling everybody in no uncertain terms that it was our fault that the machine was not reading our faces correctly because we kept looking away. We did not keep looking away. It was not our fault. The machines were broken and they reset them and half an hour later everybody that came in was going straight through. It was not our fault. This is not stuff that anybody wants to deal with that early in the morning, let alone after a restless night on an aeroplane. Oh, also, if you're traveling with somebody under 16, do not use the automatic machines for anyone in your group that you want to go through together because the machines will only take one person at a time and people under 16, quite often, they will check that they are being accompanied and they're okay and all of that sort of thing. Um, so you will get held up huge amounts if you try and use the machines with children. Or if you're traveling in a group for any other reason, just, just go through the main lineup bit. Don't use the machines. Another real disappointment was, as I said, they were renovating Brisbane Airport when I lived there about 15 years ago. And so I had expected that it would be in you know, the condition of a 15-year-old renovated building. Now, it had holes in the floor, covered up with gaffer tape. So when you wheeled your suitcase and your suitcase sort of fell into those holes, it would do 
stunts. I don't recommend coming into Brisbane International Airport if you can arrange another option. Do that. The transfer between international and domestic was fairly easy. There is a free shuttle bus uh, or you can get the train between the international and domestic terminals, but it costs a few dollars. We're on a bus to the Brisbane domestic terminal. Yes, we are. We're on the plane to Hobart, but we haven't left yet. We'll get there. <laughs> Brisbane to Hobart, our flight was delayed uh, for about an hour on the tarmac because there were two kids that were travelling by themselves. I don't know if it was for the first time or if it was just emotional circumstances, but they were really freaking out and they just wanted to get off the plane and get back to their adults. We made our way back to the terminal and then, of course, they had to be picked up, which went quite quickly. Um, but then they had luggage which needed to be found. Yeah, we sat on the tarmac for quite a while, uh, but the bonus of this was we were close enough to kind of see what was going on. So I did ask the cabin crew uh, if Pete would be able to move up to where the kids had been sitting um, so that we could have a bit more space and maybe even a little lie down. And they said yes. So we ended up having a good amount of space for that Brisbane to Hobart leg, which is about two and a half hours. Um, and so we got extra sleep. I'm glad to be home. It's lovely to spend time with my family and hang out with our cat. And obviously we've got to earn some money so that, you know, we can actually live. But 10 days from now, we will be back in Brisbane just for the weekend for a few reasons. First of all, Pete's sister is having a round number birthday. So we've got a big party planned. It's not a surprise. So it doesn't matter if she watches this. Second of all, while we were in Singapore, we arranged to have our motorcycle, the BMW 1250GS, shipped to Brisbane. It is currently in my cousin's garage, waiting for us to arrive and pick it up and go on some adventures through northern New South Wales. Might be just a little bit excited about that one. If you're enjoying following along with our adventures, please do subscribe so that you can catch up with the videos as they come out.